Hey guys, my name is Jonathan, and today I'll be doing an unboxing on my brand new Innovate LC-2 Wideband O2 setup. Uh, this one is specifically the part number 38840, and this has a three foot uh, cable, and it utilizes the Bosch LSU 4.9 Wideband O2 sensor. So without further ado, let's get to the unboxing. All right. So this is the Innovate Motorsports LC-2 Wideband Controller Kit. Let's check out what it comes with. So this kit comes with a three foot cable and this is to be used with a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. I believe it is not compatible with the earlier Bosch 4.2 sensors, if I'm not mistaken, if that's what it's called. I chose the three foot cable since uh, it's not that long of a run from the where I will be mounting my oxygen sensor and going through the firewall and into the dash. The uh, sensor itself has about, I would say, two or three feet on it. So total length, this would have been about five or six feet. They do sell an eight foot version and that would end up being around 10, yeah, 10, 11 feet, and that's way too long for my application. So I chose the three foot version and it comes with this. Um, it's already pre-terminated and it's basically just plug and play. So this is the cable right there. This goes from the wideband O2 module to the oxygen sensor. Next thing we have here is the data link cable or the serial cable. Um, not a lot of or not a lot of people are familiar with this connector. This is actually for a serial port. Uh, if you wanted to communicate with your computer, hopefully your computer has a serial port. If not, you can always get a serial port to USB converter. And this is so that you can change um, some settings such as the analog output of the um, wideband module. And also, I believe you can do um, data logging when you have this connected using a laptop. So most people aren't going to utilize this, um, but it is here for your disposal or for your disposal. Um, it would have been nice if they did have a setup where you can just connect, you know, with a regular USB cable and not with one of these uh, serial ports. Okay. It also comes with the O2 sensor bung. This is made out of mild steel um, and it's one inch long. It is uh, quite longer than what you normally find, but this is actually matched to the oxygen sensor. They actually want you to mount it where the sensor isn't so much protruding into the exhaust flow, but more so the tip right here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll open this a little later, um, but they just want that tip to protrude through the exhaust flow for the best readings. Um, if you have a stainless steel um, exhaust or wherever you're welding it to is going to be stainless steel, I highly recommend getting a stainless steel version of this. That way you can take weld it. Uh, this can still be welded on. It's just, you know, if you have a stainless steel setup, you might as well go full on stainless steel. That's just my recommendation. So put that here. Now this is the sensor. This is a Boss, you can see right there, I don't know if you guys can see that, LSU 4.9 sensor. It already has some uh, anti-seize on the threads. Um, yeah, this is the updated one compared to the LSU 4.2 if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this connector right here will plug directly into this. What's nice about this sensor is you can buy it, you know, when it comes time to replace the sensor or if you need a replacement, you can buy it directly from Bosch and it shouldn't be too expensive. Set this aside. Next we have the actual wideband controller module. So here it is. It's actually pretty small. Comes with holes so that you can mount it securely somewhere. Uh, these flying leads are basically pretty simple to connect. This is going to be your ground, your switched ignition power. 
You don't want this on at all times. You only want it on when the engine is on, so you can connect this to a switch ignition input. And these are the two analog outputs. Um, from the factory, they have it set where one analog output uh, outputs a zero to five volts, and one of them outputs a 0.1 to 1.1 volt signal. I have to check again on the manual. But you can configure these using this um, cable and their software to change the parameters of the way that it outputs the analog signal. But between the two, um, generally, in my opinion, you want the zero to five volt signal. Um, basically, it gives you more resolution. I believe, let me see what the specification is on the manual. By the way, it comes with this and a sticker. But on the manual, the range in which this wideband controller can read is 7.35 to 22.39. And basically, if you're doing the 0 to 5 volt setup, uh, 0 volts would equal 7.35. Um, air fuel ratio and 5 volt would equal 22.39 air fuel ratio and it's linear so if you were going to program this onto a dash or an ECU it's linear there's no curve or anything crazy like that the scale is linear all you need is those two uh, the other output which is the so analog one which one is analog one so analog one is yellow the yellow wire is the one that will be producing or transmitting a zero to five volt signal from the factory. And then this brown wire is gonna be analog two. It's gonna be outputting a 0.1 to 1.1 volt. Basically at um, 0.1 volts, it's gonna give out a air fuel ratio of 15. And at 1.1 volt, it's gonna give out an air fuel ratio of 14. And then it'll have a scale that's the, the only downside to that is the resolution. So imagine the resolution is just, it's, you're splitting it between one volt versus off the course of five volts. It's a little hard to explain, but the zero to five volt will be the signal that it provides the, the dash logger or the ECU, you know, what air fuel ratio it is. And if you're only, you know, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the range goes below 0.1 volts and then it goes over 1.1, but it doesn't look like the range goes, you know, as far as five volts between zero and five. So in my application in which I have a aim dash logger, and also I'm gonna run a standalone ECU, I'm actually gonna change the parameter using this cable and actually have both of these output a zero to five volt signal and have a separate wire, one that goes to the data logger or the aim dash and one that goes to the ECU uh, for tuning and for closed loop operation. So that's the flying leads. Uh, these right here, looks like this. Let me actually familiarize myself with this. So these are for the serial in and out and it appears that both of these, uh, one's for in, like that, and one goes for out, which is honestly a little confusing. Um, I need to look more into that. Uh, from my understanding, these serial connectors or cords are able to do uh, transmit and receive signal, and it looks like it's labeled in and out. So I'm not sure if going in is when you have the program on and you're trying to load the parameters, and going out is when you have the program on and you're trying to receive um, the signals or the values and then data log it on a laptop. So that one I have to clarify. Um, but regardless, I'm not planning on using this. And in the past when I've installed this on customer vehicles, they've never really needed to utilize this. Nor does anyone really have um, a port that can use this. All right. So now moving along, these sensors have to be calibrated. You can't just plug this in and just, you know, be ready to rock and roll. So they have to be zeroed out and they do not recommend you zero it out with this installed. So 
first things first is you actually want to um, calibrate the sensor while it's out of the car, while the, um, the uh, module, the controller module and the sensor is out of the car and of course with the cap off so it can calibrate to basically air with no gasoline in it or no fuel in it. And they outline that in the manual. And I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Oh, that answers my questions. If you want to log data from your LC2 or LC-2 to your laptop, you'll connect to the out port. So these are both serial ports. When you are data logging, you connect this cable to the out port. And when you are trying to change parameters, you connect this to the in port. That will also allow you to uh, change the parameters if you want to drop down to a LSU 4.2 sensor, the earlier sensors. You have to change the settings on this. If I'm not mistaken, the connector might be different though. I have to double check on that. But anyways, we'll go ahead and perform the calibration procedure. As the manual says, it needs to be in free air and removed from the exhaust completely. The reason why they have that is, let's say your car was running, you took the sensor out, you stick this in, there could be some fuel um, inside that exhaust that will change the readings of the sensor during calibration. And if this is calibrated incorrectly, then it will never give you an uh, accurate reading. And when you're tuning an engine, an accurate reading on this sensor is makes all the difference, and that's the difference sometimes between an engine that'll blow up, or engine that runs good, or engine that doesn't run good. All right. So with the sensor disconnected, we apply power to LC-2. I have a DC power supply here, and it's imitating 12 volts. You could do this with just a car battery. So I'll go ahead and hook that up. So it instructs us to power it up with the sensor disconnected. Okay, we have lights. That's a good sign. Lights up green. Turn red and flash two blink sequence. Perfect. So it is flashing a two blink sequence. And we have to leave it on powered for at least 30 seconds. So we'll count to 30. While we're waiting on that to um, go up to 30 seconds, I'll start connecting this cable. And I'll go ahead and remove this port. Be careful with this on your hands because it has a uh, anti-seize and you don't want that to get on your hands and you don't want to rub it off because you want that on there when you do uh, install it on your exhaust system. Okay. All right, that's been about 30 seconds. I'll go ahead and power it down. It now instructs us to connect the sensor. So we'll go ahead and connect that right here. Perfect. All right, let me get this out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna power it up and then it should start giving us lights. So sensors connected, power it up, it's up green. All right, don't mind that fan, that's from my DC power supply. Okay. After 30 to 60 seconds, the light will flash green.
it clashes in the case sensor. And then the light will light up solid, indicating that the sensor unit is operational and ready to take readings. Perfect. So that green light indicates that this sensor is all ready to go and it's calibrated. Let me go ahead and disconnect this and turn off my power supply. Uh, there is a heating element here and you probably don't want to touch that right now, nor do you want to put that cap on just to be safe. And I'll go ahead and plug this and plug this. So there you have it guys. Oh, actually, before I uh, end this video, I also wanna um, let you guys know that there is a thing here that says that you do not wanna power this up without the sensor disconnected. If you power this up with nothing connected in terms of the sensor, whether it's, you know, this is disconnected or here and here is disconnected, um, that will reset the calibration. So now that it's calibrated, before you ever turn on the ignition in your car or connect this to a battery, or even if you accidentally turned it on or plugged into the wrong spot, um, you want to make sure that it doesn't turn on or else you'll lose the cal calibration. And if you do lose the calibration because you accidentally turned it on, then you'll have to perform the recalibration that I just did. They also recommend repeating the calibration every so often on a NA car. They want to recalibrate it every three months. Um, and then, or after, on, on a brand new sensor, three months after it's new, or three months after the first calibration of a new sensor, and then after that first calibration, or that second calibration, then uh, once a year or every 20,000 miles. And after the car is boosted, then they want you to calibrate it um, after three months, after the first calibration, and then twice a year or every 10,000 miles, which is basically two times more than you would on an NA car. Um, and I would highly recommend doing that as well because the ECU relies, you know, highly on this signal um, to tune the, the car and for it to run correctly and to protect the engine from, you know, overly rich or overly lean conditions. So I'm very excited to be putting this in my vehicle. I have a 1994 Acura Integra with a Type R engine. Um, and I chose this because I don't need the gauge. I do have a aim dash and I'm planning on getting a standalone ECU pretty soon. And I'll be able to read my air fuel ratios in live while I'm driving on my aim dash. And I'll also be able to use this to tune my vehicle using the standalone system. Um, I may be going with the Haltech or a uh, Motec standalone ECU. So stay tuned for that for future videos uh, in regards to that. Thank you guys for watching.